for Mr. General Lee. Gentlemen, who's in charge here? I am, sir. Lieutenant McCready. That's very refreshing, Lieutenant. Sorry I haven't time to join you. Any luck? Hey, fellas. You all run across any of them hoehound candies in there, you make sure and let me know. I'd sure like to find some from my throat. No gold, sir. Just some wheat hides and tallow. Take what supplies you need. Burn everything else, including their uniforms. Sorry, Lieutenant. Dereliction of duty. Let it be a lesson to you. Follow me. <laughs> Good for nothing hostile of his. Well, they're tied up for the present. I'm in charge. You must be carrying gold, driver. I see you have soldiers along. A lot of good six will do. What do you have, folks? I'll take a troop of Confederate cavalry dangling from the end of a rope. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to furnish your own rope, Lieutenant. There you are, Lieutenant. Help yourself. Southern chivalry. We never shoot women or children. Well, anyway, women. Dismiss the truth. Yes, sir. I'm Colonel Britton. Welcome to Fort Point, Colonel. Thank you. Is that all the men you brought? Well, that's all the general could spare. Besides, I understand these rebels number only about a hundred or so. Well, that's true, but they're crack troops, Texas dragoons. They've really been giving us a headache. I presume they have the usual number of arms and legs apiece. Sure, but... Then we have enough men, Major. Yes, sir. Would you care to inspect the post? Oh, we can dispense with the formalities. Oh, uh, Major! voice of the taxpayer. Now, see here, Major, I'm tired of being given the runaround. Either I get some satisfaction or I'm going over your head. That can be arranged very easily. The Colonel has just taken over command. Mr. McQuaid is a traitor. He has a post here and another in town. I won't have much longer if these raids don't stop. That's why I'm here, Mr. McQuaid. I can yes, assure I you... Yes, I know, Colonel. You're going to do your best. So did the Major. The Major was undermanned. I brought reinforcements. How many? As many as our commitments elsewhere permitted. I'm no general, Colonel, but I can tell you how you can get a thousand allies without taking a single man away from the rest of the war. Well, I've been talking to the Major here for weeks and weeks trying I've to... I've told you I have no authority. Authority? What are you doing, fighting a war or playing parlor games? Just what was your suggestion, Mr. McQuaid? Use the Indians. Sick the Apaches on the rebels. They'll wipe them out like that. The Army's gone to a great deal of trouble to keep the Indians off the war path. But this is different, Colonel. We need their help. There's no good reason why... There's reason a very good reason. Once they get started, they wouldn't know the difference between a soldier and a settler. Maybe some of my friends in Washington may not be so timid. Show me to my quarters, please, Major. This way, Colonel Britton. Oh, uh, Colonel. 
Yes? Are you by any chance from the East? Baltimore? Ah, I thought perhaps you were when I heard your name. Uh, my wife's from that part of the country, too. Uh, I thought maybe you might have mutual friends. Perhaps. Why don't you stop by for a drink before dinner tonight? Uh, thank you, but I'm very lonesome for her out here. I'm sure she'd like to meet somebody from back home. I'll see if I can make it. Fine. I'll expect you at 6 o'clock. What kind of man is that? Wanting to get the Indians stirred up. There's no money for him in peaceful Indians. They're not a good market for the guns and rot gut whiskey he sells them. Uh-huh. One of that kind, huh? I gather that's how his wife feels about it, too, which probably accounts for his nasty manners lately. However, he does have influence, and uh, his private stock of liquor isn't so bad. Hey, sir! Hey, you guys look like the squares! Lieutenant McCready. We uh, run into a little trouble, sir. So I gather, Lieutenant. Where are the wagons? The Confederates relieved us of them, sir. Along with our uniforms. Lieutenant, I've been in the Army a good many years. I've seen some strange sights, but I've never seen anything as strange as this. Yes, sir. Suppose you explain. Well, sir, this rebel band swooped down on us. And you defended yourself, of course. No, sir, we couldn't, you see. We were in swimming. We hadn't seen any sign of the enemy, sir. We thought we were safe, so... I posted sentries and told the men they could take a 10-minute break and have a swim. Do you know the correct military term for that swim? Yes, sir. Dereliction of duty, sir. Lieutenant, it's a good thing for you that I don't know your name, or I'd be forced to prefer charges. Dismissed, Lieutenant. But Creedy's very young, sir. Sometimes I wonder if the Army really needs second lieutenants. Say one, Colonel. That's fine. My wife will be out in a moment. When she heard the new Colonel was coming in, she, woman-like, rushed off to get fixed up. I, uh, I forgot to tell her who the distinguished guest was. I'm sure she'll be surprised. If my visit is inconvenient, Oh, no, I... no, no, Colonel. That's quite all right. She likes surprises. She has so few of them here at the post. Well... Sorry I kept you waiting. My two husbands told me we were having a guest. And the male guest at that. I couldn't resist the chance to dress up a bit. I haven't had the opportunity since I left Baltimore. I don't believe I've met our guest, Sam. Won't you do the honors? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, this is Colonel Britton. Colonel, this is my wife. I'm honored, ma'am. Britton? Yeah. That's right. Oh, I see. I'm sorry I spoiled your little surprise, Sam. I'm sure you've been looking forward to it. But the Colonel and I have never met before. I'm afraid I don't understand. No, of course you don't. I, you see, I, I used to know a man named Britton, and... My husband thought you were he. Oh. Oh, uh, if you'll excuse me, Colonel, I'll, I'll get us some cigars. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was here to embarrass you. Oh, I know. I apologize for my husband. Won't you be seated, Colonel? You're Jeb, aren't you? Yes, but how... I thought so. Vance often spoke of you. Now I'm beginning to understand. You're Julie. Of course. I've heard about you, too. From Vance's letters, I thought at one time you were going to be married. So did I. I never knew what happened, I mean, between you and Vance. The war happened. Man has to fight for what he believes in. Oh, it had nothing to do with his joining the Confederate Army. To put it quite bluntly, 
He jilted me. Oh, I can hardly believe that. Yes, it was hard for me to believe, too. But when you're engaged and your fiancé just suddenly leaves, no quarrel, no final words, not even a letter. Yes, Vance would do a thing like that. He belongs only to himself. He'll always hurt those who love him. How well I know. That's why I like to believe it was best for both of us. Still, I can't help wondering where he is and what he's doing. The last I heard, he was in Virginia. Now, if you'll excuse me, please, Mrs. McQuaid. Oh, yes, of course, Colonel. It was nice meeting you, Jeb. It was nice meeting you, too, Julie. You know, I always knew Vance was crazy. But just how crazy, I never realized until now. Good night. Good night. Thanks for the drink. I suppose you told him how many kinds of a heel I am. I didn't have to. Time you and I had an understanding, Julie. What's that for? I'm leaving you. Because of tonight? It helped me make up my mind. Now look, Julie. I'm willing to say I'm sorry. Isn't that enough? You said that before. Oh, what do you want me to do? Get down on my knees and beg? I don't care what you it's do. It's not as simple as that, Julie. You're my wife just because your feelings got hurt. Maybe tonight or last night or any other night. It's the way you've been acting ever since we've been here. Tonight only made me realize there's no use pretending any longer. I didn't notice you're doing much pretending. Separate rooms, locked doors, that cool, ladylike politeness. Why don't you be honest, Julie? You're not fooling me. Oh, stop it, You Sarah. haven't forgotten that Breton fellow. If I haven't, it's because you won't let me. That's right. Blame me. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm only trying to say I can't go on like this any longer. Don't you understand? I'm leaving. No, you're not leaving. You're not going to make a laughing stock out of me. Tell them you throw me out. Tell them anything you like to save your pride. But take your hands off me. Now, are you going to drive me to San Gil where I can get the stage? Or shall I ask Major Hardy to drive me there for escort? Next stage is a week away, Julie. Why don't you wait? I prefer waiting in San Gil. Ju I'll get the buggy. You know, I was just thinking, if you can't catch the fox, why not let the fox catch you? Apaches show up instead of reps. If that happens, we won't have to worry about haircuts for some time. Keep playing. Stop looking so scared.
Sorry to spoil the concert, gentlemen, but stay where you are and don't reach for any guns. You gentlemen from the south, suppose you do the same. All right, round them up, men. Everybody back to the fire. This the lot you spied on this afternoon? Yes, sir, that's the lot, 15. Where's the rest of your troop, Lieutenant? Well, sir, if I carried out my orders correctly, they should be just behind the wagons looking down their rifle bench. I wouldn't, sir. You're outnumbered. Have your men lay down their arms. Do you surrender? I haven't much choice, have I? All right, then. We ought to get a new scout and send that one back to school. We had to look sharp all day to keep him tripping over it. Well, hello, Jim. I thought you were with Stewart in Virginia. So you came out west. Same old Jeb. I was wondering when they'd send a real soldier after me. Too bad it didn't work, Jeb. Take whatever you need, burn everything else, run off the stock. Help yourself to some good Yankee leather. Yes, sir. If I remember correctly, you and I always wore the same size boot. Alan, collect the prisoner's arm. Yes, sir. Sure, use an extra pair of boots. Tell them men to help themselves. Help yourself, fellas. Come on, who's got number ten? How's Dad? Busy, I guess. Called the Washington right after I left. How'd he take it? By choosing the wrong colors. Why didn't you tell him yourself? Find out. I never was much good at family scenes. I uh, know. Julie told me. When did you meet her? When I got to the fort. Julie is out here? Yes, but don't let her give you any ideas. She's Mrs. McQuaid now. Her husband runs a trading post. Oh. Is she happy? I didn't ask her. Vance, I always knew you were irresponsible. But what you did to that girl... Did she say so? I'm telling you what I think. I've always known what you thought. We have to get moving. Line up the prisoners. Yes, sir. Prisoners! All the board. We expect you to observe the rules of warfare. We have no facilities for handling prisoners. Look here what I found, Captain. Well, how do you fellows manage to get all the good tobacco that we grow? Jeb, we both learned at West Point that a raiding party deep in enemy territory made its own rules. You're about 12 miles from your base. If you start now, you should be able to make it by summer. 12 or 1,200, what's the difference? You build a fire big enough to attract every Indian in the territory. Then you turn it loose without guns or horses or, or boots. It's a rough war. Better break than you Yanks would give us. You're right, Lieutenant. My brother has a higher sense of duty than I have. If there's another time, don't expect any favors from me. I won't. Lieutenant Marshal, give the order. Troop, stage foot, forward, power. Just how you feel, sir. Your feet, I mean. Now fix you a foot bath. Never mind my feet, Lieutenant. See that the men are taken care of. Yes, sir. Maybe you'll believe me now that there's only one way to catch those reps. Not as long as I'm in command. And if you have anything further to say about bringing the Indians into this, I suggest you take it up with Washington. I already have. 
They're sending out an officer with orders to contact the Apache chief. You'll find it isn't very hard to use the Indians if you know how to handle them. With guns and whiskey? Is that an accusation? I thought it was a question. The answer is no. If you have any reason to doubt it, maybe the authorities would like to find out about it. I'll keep that in mind, McQuaid. And in the meantime, I hope you won't mind very much if we do your job for you. Colonel. <laughs> She's trying to hone in on our job. Let's see who it is. Free drinks, too. Poor stuff, though. Very poor. Trying to run away. Yeah. Run her back, you're just as dead. Sam McQuaid, McQuaid Trading Company. McQuaid? That's what it says, do you know it? No. Not exactly. Captain, sir. Y'all like to take a look at this? Some of the words are a little too long for me. Lynn, find some cigars? Look at this. No, an armchair general. Been given Washington advice on how to win the war. Looks like they took it, too. Read what it says there. This is to inform you that in accordance with your suggestion, we are sending Major Thomas Reardon from Washington with full authority to negotiate with the Indians for their aid against the Confederates now active in that region. Pursuant to instructions, he will be in Fort Point on the 25th day of this month. That's tomorrow. And you will make such arrangements as necessary for a meeting with Gray Cloud. Now, the fools. Don't they know an Apache won't ask whether a man's north or south before they kill him? Well, what difference does it make if they hit the warpath? They'll be doing our job for us, and we'll be heading south. What about the settlers who are loyal to our cause, who've helped us? Yeah, I see what you mean. Man, when I die, I want it to be with a gal from Georgia in one hand and a mint julep in the other. We'll try to arrange it. has been unavoidably detained. I'll have to ask you to dismount and hand over your orders, Major Reardon. Snap to it, Major. There are no Union soldiers within 30 miles. Your orders, please. This will do you no good. They'll just send someone else to take my place. That won't be necessary. I'm about due for a promotion anyway, in one army or the other. So I'll trouble you for your coat. If you put this uniform on, you'll be shot as a spy. If I'm captured. You will be. Tucker, Calhoun, you're about to become Yankee sergeants. Yes, sir. Hope the folks back home don't hear about this. Lynn, take the troop up the Sand Creek Crossing. Cut the trail both ways. What shall I do with him? Keep him entertained until I join you again. Here. Thank you. You ought to.
to watch that waistline, Major. Those Washington desk jobs will do it every time. You're not going to get away with this, you know. Have a cigar and take off your pants. <laughs> Expecting us. We want to let them know we're here. And watch that you all said you're supposed to be a Yankee. Uh, uh, I'll try, Captain. And remember, he's a major. Uh, uh, maybe you ought to have brought someone along a little more smart than me. I brought you for your shooting eye, not for your brain. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir. All right. The emissary from Washington? Yes, sir. You have credentials? Major Reardon. I don't suppose you know who I am. No, sir. Page was my name. Major General Harrison Page. Well, I'm afraid I don't. You should. You were my aide for a number of years. You haven't aged a bit, Tom. I'd say you'd even grown younger. Well, uh, maybe it's the climate or the active life I've been leading. Maybe so. And maybe it's because you're wearing another man's uniform. Yes. Um, that could account for the difference, couldn't it? Which one's the chief? The gentleman on the left is Mangus Coloradus. The one on the right is Cochise. The gentleman in the center is Chi. And I'm Grey Cloud. You? You should bone up on your military history before you impersonate an officer. You would know that General Page became an Apache when the army disapproved of his marriage to an Indian. And who is it I'm addressing? You might as well tell the truth. You're probably going to be spread eagled over an anthill anyway. Captain Britain, Army of the Confederate States of America. The man Reardon wants you to kill for him. And what did you hope to accomplish by this deception, Captain Britton? I wanted to keep the Indians out of it. The government promised to stop treating the Apaches like outlaws in their own country if we helped them. That promise won't mean very much if they lose the war. Can your side offer better? We don't want your help. We're not fighting women and children. That was not what the Union government asked of us. If your men got started, could you guarantee to keep them under control? Why... You talk of peace. Well, this is your chance to have it. This isn't the Indians' war, so let the white man fight it out himself. I have to admire your unmitigated gall, but it's not up to me alone. It's for these gentlemen to decide. Sit down. Soldado, Pelicano, no bestie, so no hatakines. I'm not talking to you, he's not going to be with a cool. Every ham, a me, a pan, hoge. Now, bon, that's it. It's taken an uncommon long time to make up their minds. Time is something Apaches worry very little about. You? Oh, I've come around to their way of thinking about most things. Like the antio for me. Who was it started the practice of paying bounties for Indian scalps? Who made treaties and promptly broke them? When promises I had made were ignored by the man who succeeded me in 
command of this territory, I was compelled as a matter of pure ethics to side with the Indians. My conscience wouldn't let me do otherwise. In a war between the whites and reds, would you remain an Indian? You fight for what you believe in. So do I. Pelicano, Nida Duma, Hako Shi. Geronimo, Nevo, Epan, Nine, Nevo, Eta, Yeta. Taya Mata, Pelicano, Behan, Nabin Weiji. Ne, Kona Shai. What lay? Dime Bayutewa, Bauga, Pelicano. We will not fight. We will live in peace. Good. You may go, but there is a price to pay for our neutrality. One of our young chiefs, Geronimo, has been accused of massacring a wagon train. He and his men are held prisoners in San Gil. They're guilty. We've seen the dead men. If that's true, we will punish them in our own way. But the white men must set them free. That's rather a large order. San Gil is a yank town. Even his uniform might not work there. You have 24 hours to find out. We'd better get going then. Tell them to release my men. They will remain here as hostages. Oh, no. They're not going to get stretched over anthills because someone in San Gil remembers Major Reardon. We'll all try to free Geronimo, or we'll all go to the anthills. You'd make a good Indian. Thank you. 24 hours. I haven't been to town for so long, I forgot what a woman looks like. There's one. Is that a woman? Oh, I think so. Don't remind him too soon. As I was the store, maybe now I can find me some of them whorehound candies from a sore throat. Sonny, what's going on over there? They're going to hang some Indians. You going to string them up, Lieutenant, or do we do it? Nobody's going to string anybody up until they've had a hearing. I thought you soldiers was here to protect us, not them engines. The marshal here asked for our help. You got a funny idea how to get reelected. I never asked for this job. While I got it, I'm going to do it right. What's going on here, Lieutenant? We have some Indian prisoners inside, sir. They want to hang them without a trial. There will be no mob action here. Go on about your business. We figure this is our business. Them engines massacred three white people. What are we waiting on? Let's go get them. What's your name, sir? What's it to you? His name is Evans, sir. Sergeant, if anyone in this crowd makes a move, you'll shoot Mr. Evans. With pleasure, sir. Hey, wait a minute. Shall we go inside, Lieutenant? Here's your work. You think we ought to leave a sergeant in charge with that mob out there, sir? The mob is Mr. Evans' worry now. Now listen, you. Uh, no sense flying off the handle. Let's wait and see what the soldiers are going to do about it. That's what's known as delegating authority, Lieutenant uh, Crosby, sir. I'm Major Reardon. Not by any chance the Reardon that climbed the flagpole at West Point. You were there? No, sir, but I heard my brother tell about it. He was in a class below you. I guess I'll never live that down. Now, what's all this about these Indian prisoners? We captured them near where a supply train was massacred. A fellow named McQuaid ran a trading post here. McQuaid? Well, that's the man I was sent out here to meet. Uh, did he mention anything to you about it before he left? No, sir. As a matter of fact, we didn't get along very well. well. He was to take me to the Apache chief to arrange a treaty. That's too bad, sir. Maybe if I could talk to the Indian prisoners here, they might know where Grey Cloud is. That's up to the marshal, sir. I'll call him. Oh, marshal. I'm Major Reardon from Washington. I'd like to question your prisoners, if I might. Why, sure. I guess that'll be all right. Which one is Geronimo? How'd you know any of them was Geronimo? 
I uh, heard his name mentioned as I came through the crowd out there. I see. That one there. Why did you kill the traitor, McQuaid? He sold my men. Bad whiskey. And bad guns. The whiskey poisoned some. And the guns blew the heads off many Indians. He deserved to die. I do not understand why we are put in jail for killing him. I think of a good reason. I'll let him know. I came out here to help your people. I want to know how to find Grey Cloud. If we are not turned loose, Grey Cloud will find you. If he only trust me, I'd let him and his men guide me there alone. You mean you want me to turn them loose? I'd be responsible. Ain't nobody responsible for him but me. Sorry, Major. Well, now, just a minute, I was sent 2,000 miles to see Grey Cloud. The man who was to take me there has been killed. These Indians are the only people who can help me. Are you going to hold it up? You got your job to do. I got mine. You didn't mind calling on the army when you needed help. I didn't know there was any strings on it. Geronimo, if I can persuade them to turn you loose, will you promise... Over to Major Reardon was here. Yes, ma'am. He's right here, Mrs. McQuaid. Oh, Major. Mrs. McQuaid, Major Ridden. Hello, Julie. You two know each other? Yes, a long time ago. Lieutenant, I don't know what this is all about. Uh, Mrs. McQuaid is surprised to see me here. Surprised isn't the word for it. Yes, well, I'll have to tell you all about it. It's quite a story. Yes, I'll bet it is. Lieutenant Oh, Crosby. if you have anything to say to the lieutenant, I'm sure you can tell him later. We haven't seen each other for so long that business can wait. But, uh, Lieutenant Crosby, uh, I... Yes, you'll excuse us, Lieutenant. Julie, where can we go and talk? Anything you've got to say can be said right here, Van Fabrick. Please, Julie. This is important. That's a woman. Uh, he told us not to remember too soon. <laughs> I'm sorry about your husband. Coming from you, I doubt that, but it doesn't matter. Well, in that case, may I say you're bearing up extremely well? Thank you. Well? Nice place you have here. It's good to have a rug underfoot. Makes a man feel almost civilized again. And you. Julie, you're more lovely than ever. You've no idea how a soldier hungers for the mere touch of a woman's hand. You can turn off the charm. It doesn't work anymore. I was wrong. You have changed. You haven't. Except for that uniform. I was afraid you'd notice that. Perhaps I'd better explain. Yes, and while you're about it, you might explain what you did with a real Major Reardon. My troop is holding him prisoner. Your troop? And you're the famous rebel leader. <sighs> they'll not only shoot you, they'll make you dig your own grave. I had no idea you were so bitter. Julie, I came here because I need your help. As if I'd help you. I know how you feel. You have a perfect right to. I ran out on you. I've been kicking myself for it ever since. It's hard, I hope. Well, I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. Going off to war, I didn't want to leave you tied to a husband you might never see again. So you just left. No goodbyes, nothing. You just left. Well, I was afraid you wouldn't understand my choosing the Confederacy. No, I wouldn't have understood. But I'd have forgiven you. But that's just it. I wanted you to be free. Well, that was noble of you. I wasn't trying to be noble. I was trying to be sensible. I hope the reason you have for masquerading in that uniform is more convincing. I'm trying to keep the Indians off the warpath. To do that, I have to get these Indians out of jail. If I don't... Julie, why should I lie to you? The only plausible reason I can think of at the moment is it comes to you so easily. What are you going to do? Nothing if you leave town. All right. I'll leave tomorrow. You will leave now. I can't. You did once before, you can do it again. Only this time it's my idea. Julie, for the last time, I'm not trying just to save my men. Once the Indians get started, they'll turn against everybody. This new and unselfish character doesn't become you, Van. Sorry to bother you, ma'am. But there's a civilian in town just arrived from Washington. He wants to see you about the Indian project at once, sir. 
Will you excuse me, Mrs. McQuaid? Good day, Major Reardon. He says he's an expediter, whatever that is. Well, she told me he was coming, sir. He seemed to expect some kind of official reception. Well, I guess it just slipped my mind. You reckon this here, uh, expediter? Yeah. Do uh, you reckon he knows Reardon? We'll soon find out. Take a look at that left front shoe. He's got a gip in that hook. When you pulling out? No rush. I may be here for a while. Who's that officer with Crosby? I don't know. Some new army man just pulled in. This strikes me as a rather sloppily run post, Corporal. Sergeant, three stripes, Corporal, two. Yes, I know, I know. Mr. Delacorte? Major Reardon. Well, Major, I'm accustomed to a little better treatment than this. I am sorry. I was checking some details with Ms. McQuaid. Uh, Sam McQuaid's wife? His widow. He was killed two days ago. Oh, yes. Colonel Britton told me about this. Is Colonel Britton here? He's off chasing those rebels. They jumped us on the way from Fort Point. I wanted to get into the fight, but he insisted that I come on here while he rode them off. After all, my job here is more important than personal glory. I know how you feel, sir. I wish I was with them myself right now. Well, you too have a very important job, Major. You must realize... Oh, I'm sorry. I've got a pebble in this booth. I can't... The military department is yours. Understand that? The committee sent me out here to expedite matters. <clears throat> That's my specialty, expediting. You know how much red tape there is in Washington? Yes, sir. Well, I cut it. See the right people and get the job done. More men like that on their side, and we're a cinch to win the war. Now, there's one way to handle your problem out here. Offer a bounty for every rebel scalp. You think a rebel scalp is worth good union money, sir? At this point, yes. Besides, the taxpayers are paying it. I forgot that. Huh? I hope you've got a good hotel in this town. It's not exactly a hotel, sir, but we have a room for you over at McQuaid's trading post. Oh, well, can we get to it? <laughs> Just follow me, sir. All right. Uh, say, I have an idea, sir. Why not let the people know what's going on? I think it would be good for their morale to hear from someone so close to the war effort. Well, that's not a bad idea. These people may need a senator someday when this territory becomes a state. Although, as far as I'm concerned right now, they can let the dreaded Indians keep it. You all set, sir? Oh, yes. Lieutenant uh, Crosby, I want to have a talk with you. I'll be back in a minute. I have to take care of Mr. Delacorte. I've got to take care of $20,000 in gold. He can wait. Well, what about the gold? I want to know if the road east is safe or if those Rebs are still roaming around Ruth. Uh, who does the gold belong to? The federal government when I get it to Fort Point. Well, why take a chance? Why not lay over here until we clean out the Rebels? By all means, the Union needs that gold. Leave it at the Wells Fargo office for safekeeping. I'll post a guard over it. Suits me. Ain't I seen you someplace before? Well, not unless you've been in Washington. Funny, you look familiar. Sergeant, go with this man and see that a shipment of gold is safely stored at the Wells Fargo office. Stay on watch until you're relieved. And don't let it out of your sight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You sure you've never been west before? Just as sure as I'm a major in the Union Army. Uh, shall we go? Yes. Major, what about them Redskins, Major? Are you going to fix it so they'll leave us alone? You're going to make a deal with them? Yeah, what about it? We got a right to know what the Army's going to do. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Delacorte, special emissary from Washington. He has come to settle the Indian question once and for all. Gentlemen, how do you plan to settle it? With more talk or more soldiers? Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's the point, exactly. And <clears throat> you seem to have these people unduly upset. <clears throat> you were upset when I got here. Uh, citizens of this great and glorious territory... Live in this territory with Apaches and rebels all around and not enough soldiers? 
Well, you can't blame people for worrying if it's safe to sleep nights. My friend, I'm not blaming you. More soldiers, that's what we need. What's the army doing anyway? Ain't this territory worth saving? Now, believe me, my friends, you have nothing to worry about. That's what Sam McQuaid figured, and look where he is. What we want's action, not promises. Take them engines in the jailhouse. We're all for lining them up against a wall and shooting them. But the army says no. Certainly. We want to keep the Apaches off your necks and stick them on the rebels. I thought you wouldn't want anything done to the Indians until you'd had a chance to talk to the tribal council. Well, I'm not sure. Success of your mission depends on it. I mean, in that case, yes. I yes. knew you'd agree. Marshal, the keys. Sergeant Tucker, you'll stand guard at the jail until you're relieved. Yes, sir. Your room's ready, sir. Yes, well, uh, just a moment. My friends... Uh, later, I... Mr. Delacourt, you must be tired from your tedious journey. This way. I don't know how a politician's going to do anything about this. Well, just... Shouldn't I say something about how happy I am to be in this godforsaken place? Uh, tonight, everybody will be there. Mr. Delacourt? Oh, Allow me. Mrs. McQuaid, Mr. Delacourt. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you, ma'am. I was most distressed to hear of your husband's death. Believe me, ma'am, when I finish with the Redskins... I'm sure of it, sir. I do hope you'll be comfortable. Yeah. This way, sir. Yeah. Julie. Do you believe me? About the Indians, yes. Maybe someday you'll believe the rest, too. Julie, were you happy with him? What right of you to ask me that? I love you. I always have. Major Reardon! He's all yours, Major. Oh, this granted alkali dust. As far as I'm concerned, the Indians can have the entire Southwest. My sentiments exactly. Ah. You must have been... You must have been a very young man in the Mexican War, Major. Aren't you confusing me with someone else? Well, that's possible. You realize... You realize, of course, that one false move could endanger our Indian policy. Are you sure it's the right policy? Well, of course I am. They're only, they're only, ha thank you. They're only happy when they're fighting. Well, let them enjoy themselves against the enemy. Their enemy is the whole white race, Mr. Delacourt. Are you criticizing government policy? I'm suggesting it's dangerous to pay a bounty for scalps. Now, you take my scalp, for example. If an Apache handed it to you, would you be able to tell whether it was blue or gray? Well, if there's any more of this copperhead talk, I'd say it was gray. Gray or blue, I'm quite attached to it. If you need anything, just ask. Mm, all right. Oh, uh, Major. Uh, I will uh, need those jail keys. Oh, certainly. As you so aptly put it, the success of my mission may depend upon those Apache prisoners. And as long as I have them locked up, I think Gray Cloud will come to terms. I'm sure he will, sir. Ah, hot water. That's fine. Mustn't let him think we're barbarians. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Lieutenant, I'm counting on you for the entertainment. Just make sure that everybody in town is at the barrel house by 10 o'clock sharp. But, sir, 10 o'clock. Yes, sir. All right, Johnny Reb. Do you surrender? I surrender. Get out of that basket. Get march on. How are the prisoners behaving, Tucker? Everything's in order, sir. Quiet as sheep. Ten o'clock tonight. Turn them loose and head them to the hills. If we get separated, go to Sand Creek Crossing. I'll need the keys. Yeah, I guess you will. I'll see that you have them. Sergeant Calhoun, I am holding you personally responsible for the safety of that gold. And I shall wring your neck if it is not in the saddlebags by 10 o'clock sharp. It's in the saddlebags, sir. I wasn't sure what time you'd want to be leaving. Uh -huh. uh, for my sore throat. No, thanks. 10 sharp. You don't say, Mr. Delacour. Well, I do say so, sir. And you may quote me on that verbatim. And then I said to the president, thank you. 
Mr. President, I said, I'm no statesman. I'm just an ordinary, run-of-the-mill, common man. You don't say, Mr. Delacour. Well, that was a little difficult for the President to believe. But he smiled, and he said to me, why didn't I think of that before? Do you get the picture of the man? Even with all his great cares of state, that man is... Oh! Where's the time? Well, I'm all sorry, I can't imagine how that happened. Oh, here, uh, let me dry you off. Dry me off? I'm so clear through. Well, uh, I'll get you another pair of trousers. Step right in the cloak. Well, I could... don't go away, will you, gentlemen? I want to tell you what the president said, because it'll affect every one of you here in this territory. Don't go away. Oh, let's get those wet trousers off. I've got it. The tarot dealer of Sioux City. What's that? No, he was a Frenchman. He talked with a lingo. Who? Huh? Never mind. the expedited till I get back. Yes, sir. You can hear better inside. Back and get a pair of trousers for Delacourt. There was no light. I thought you were asleep. I was standing by the window listening to the music. It reminded me of the dances in Baltimore before the war. Why don't you go back to Baltimore, Julie, where it's safe? Perhaps I will. I can't stay and keep an eye on you. No, I want to very much. Do you, Vance? You see a girl standing in the moonlight? That's it, forever. And you see a man coming towards you in the moonlight. And that's it, forever. Then suddenly there isn't any moon. The man's gone. You don't care what happens. So someone else comes along and tells you of a place where there's new faces and new hills. But the same moon. But you don't look at the moon again. You keep your eyes on bolts of calico and sacks of beans. And you try to forget. Julie. Julie, no matter what happens, I promise you'll believe this. I meant what I said about us. I'll try. I'll be back this time. Keep looking at the moon. Time to call the meeting to order. It's very important to. Very well. When in Rome, do as the Indians do. Introduce me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Delacorte, our esteemed visitor from Washington.
will now address us. Thank you, excuse me, please, may <laughs> Citizens of this great and glorious territory, the way you've greeted me with open arms, me, a simple servant of the public, has touched me greatly. You may think that because you are not in the front lines that we in Washington do not realize the great contribution that you're making to this gigantic struggle. Hey, soldier. But we do. You drop these. Yes, indeed we do. For whence Thanks. comes our strength? Whence comes our power? Except from the outskirts of this magnificent land, like life uh, giving blood. Give these to his nibs. Oh, the Major, there's someone here I think you should meet. Uh, Colonel, did I understand you to say you, that you knew Major Reardon? Yes, indeed. Nice to meet you again, Colonel. I, uh, I see you have new boots. I see you have a whole new uniform, Major. As well, uh, I have some things to attend to if you'll excuse me for a That's all right, I'll go right along with you. Or do you think it's polite to walk out on the expediter? I'll uh, risk a breach of etiquette this time, Major. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Now look, Chief, go on. You don't need that. I'll decide. Civil conflict. I myself have been on the... I've seen our brave boys in blue lying... Far enough. I suppose you tell me what this is all about, huh? Well, it's very simple. I wanted to see Julie. I'd hardly be welcome in this town in my own uniform, so I borrowed this one. What'd you do with Major Reardon? My men are holding him. He's wearing my uniform. It's a little snug around the waist. Do you expect me to believe that you'd risk a firing squad just to see a girl? Well, you met her. What do you think? I think you're either a liar or crazy. Or both. You always did. Now, wait a minute, Vance. Don't back me into a corner. If you're captured, you'll be shot, and I won't be able to stop it. But brother or no brother, unless you tell me the truth, All I right. swear... I pulled this to keep the Apaches off my neck. Can both... McQuaid made a deal with your government to turn them loose on us. Yes, I know. He wanted me to sponsor it, but where do you fit in? Reardon had a date with the Indians, and I kept it for him. To turn the Apaches against us, huh? No. To stay out and let us fight our own war. Well, if this is true, why did you first tell me that cock and bull story about Julie? Well, I thought you might be on McQuaid's side. Hmm. You know, if I could be sure you were telling the truth... Ask Julie. She's at the post. All right, I will. Go ahead. ...have been sent out to protect your homes. And if you haven't got enough protection, I guarantee you, with the name of the President of the United States, that you have Got more. it? I got it. Now I know who he is. Julie. Colonel. Julie, I hate to disturb you at this late hour, but, uh, well, my life seems to depend on it. May we come in? Yes, of course. Come in. And Julie, would you please tell my brother that... Shut up, Vance. I'll do the talking. How long has he been in town? Just today. I met him at the jail. What was he doing? I was trying to keep the people from lynching some Indians. That really would have started something. Will you be quiet? You know if he had a meeting with Gray Cloud? Take a look down there. One moment. Mrs. McQuaid? Yes? What is it? Have you seen Major Reardon, ma'am, or Colonel Britton? Well, have you looked for them at the post? No, but I will. If you see Reardon, you'd better notify us. The stage driver seems to think he's a Confederate spy. Really? Yes, of course I will. Thank you for telling me. Murphy, come with me. Yes, Sergeant. You mind if I sit down? I've had a rather trying day. Vance, this is no joke. If you're caught now, I won't be able to do what? anything. Let them jam. Well, you've got about 30 seconds to make up your mind whether they do or not. If I hear word, if I let you go, you'll clear out of this part of the country. I guess I haven't much choice. Come on. You'd better stay here. No. I didn't think she would. Me? The same. There are two others. I'll pick them up on the way out. We'll pick them up. Go ahead.
o'clock. Where do you reckon he is? If he don't show up pretty soon. That's him. You had us worried, Captain. I had myself worried. I was afraid we wasn't going to get out of town with that Yankee gold. Where are the keys? Never mind that. Let's mount up. I wouldn't do that. It's all right. Mount up. What's that about keys? The keys to the jail. We we're going to release the prisoners before we left. It's part of the deal I made with Grey Cloud. No matter what you think of me, Jeb, let them go. If they aren't free by sunup, the Apaches will explode all over the landscape. You've never been near Grey Cloud. For the last time, Jeb, I'm telling you the truth. It's the only reason I came here. I'll tell you why you came here. That's the only thing you'd risk your life for. I'd forgotten all about that. That's all you ever thought about. That was this morning, before any of this came up. Don't give me any more of that hogwash. We're even now. So get on that horse and get out of here before I change my mind. You believe me, don't you? Well, I've heard enough of your lies to last me a lifetime. You promised to believe me about one thing. I'm holding you to that promise. No, get out. And keep going. They can break you for this. Goodbye, Julie. Who was shot at? I'm glad you're back, Vance. How'd you make out? No cigars this trip. Tell Major Reardon he can have his uniform back. Well, what about the Apaches? Are they gonna stay neutral? If my brother has any sense, they will. He got back to San Gil before I could let some Indians out of jail. If he doesn't turn them loose, the whole Apache nation will be breathing down our necks. It's part of the deal I made with Grey Cloud. Well, that means we're finished here. We'll be heading home. Did I say that? Well, it's our job to get these men back to Selby before any Indian trouble starts. I don't need you to tell me my job, Lieutenant. What came over him? Have you ever been in love? Well, sure, lots of times. What's that got to do with it? His gals in San Gil. If them engines should bust loose. Lynn. Yes, sir? You're right. We head south at daybreak. for me? Yes. I asked you here to explain certain apparent inconsistencies, Colonel. Such as why you pretended to know the man who posed as Major Reardon when you met him last night. I wasn't pretending. I did know him. Did you know he was a Confederate spy? I knew all about him. He was my brother. Your brother? That's right. <laughs> you know, you never could tell what that kid was going to do next. Well, you don't expect me to consider that an extenuating circumstance for what you did. I don't particularly care what you consider it. Oh, you don't? This is a court-martial offense, isn't it, Lieutenant? That's not up to me to judge, sir. I'll answer for him. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. Well, I shall inform Washington of it. Rest assured of that. It won't be necessary. I've already written a full report of my actions. Excuse me, sir. There's a smoke signal off in the hills. Never mind smoke signals. This is more important. How can you expedite for such people?
fuss about a bonfire. There's another. What does it mean? No, but it must mean trouble. Well, haven't you people ever seen smoke before? In this country where there's smoke, there's apt to be Indians under it. Here they come. Over there. What do you think, sir? I don't know. But we better look as strong as possible. Sergeant, call out the troop. See that every man is in full uniform. Pass the word along to keep the women and children indoors, huh? Now, just a moment. You've got no right to give orders I'll around I'll give here. orders until I'm relieved of duty by someone qualified to do so. Any objections, Lieutenant? No, sir. Yeah, well, I've got some objections. I'm supposed to expedite... Indians. Officer? I am. Yesterday, I made an arrangement with one of your officers. I wish to speak with him. The man you dealt with was an imposter. He's no longer here. Then I shall repeat the terms to you. In return for Indian neutrality, you will release the men you hold prisoner. That's ridiculous. We don't want their neutrality. We want their help. Your men have committed a serious offense. If they are guilty, we will do what should be done to them. You have my word for that. The word of a former officer, if you would prefer. Such you would be the last to expect an officer to yield to threats. Not threats, Colonel. Strength. When the hills are empty, Elder, tell your people when their chiefs come in peace. I'll bring Geronimo before you to consider what you ask. Don't make no deals with no murdering savages. That'll be enough of that. Send them back where they belong. Don't listen to no squaw man. I am here under a flag of truce. We will speak further when you have silenced the foul mouthed scum responsible for. Arrest the man who fired that shot. Yes, sir. to send all possible reinforcements at once. Then deploy your men on foot to defend the town. Yes, sir. I want all the firearms and ammunition in town. Anyone who's short on either, report to the post for supplies. Colonel, what can I do to help? I need all the guns and ammunition in the trading post. Of course. I'll get the keys to the storeroom. All right. Here, 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 here. Where are you going? I'm going to shoot in there. No, you don't. Get back inside. You really don't expect them to attack, do you? They wouldn't be so foolhardy. We killed their chief. They outnumber us 50 to 1. What do you think? Yeah. They might be foolhardy. Can you handle a gun? Well, a as a boy, I shot rabbits. Well, get up high and shoot Indians. Yes, all right. I'm going to hit the rabbits.
gracious, man. Here they come, man. Get ready to fire it. Ready to fire? There's a lot of shooting over to the west, Captain. Around San Gil. It's too far off for me to make out. I'll have a look. Lynn, take over. It might be a trap, Vance. Could be a lot of things. I'll follow you, Corporal. Advance. San Gil's full of Apaches. Looks like the whole town's burning. Tucker, give the prisoners their arms and ask the Major to join me. Yes, sir. I guess the best way south is by way of San Gil. I thought you'd see it that way. Fall back to the 
back to McQuaid's trading post.
Julie. That sure ain't no, ain't no mint julep. Until the Georgia peach comes along, ma'am. You'll do. You'll do. You'll be mighty lonesome around here without you two. No Johnny Rebs to get in my hair. No Julie in a lovely red dress to brighten up the landscape. I'll save that red dress, Jeb, for a special occasion in Baltimore. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> it's been a most unusual trip. Believe me, when I get to Washington, I'll make a full and comprehensive report, except for a few details which have already skipped my mind. This may refresh your memory. Well, I'll probably lose this. I'm very careless about such matters. <clears throat> my, uh, my wife had never believed this. Oh, I forgot. Uh, the officer in charge has got to sign my travel voucher. Mm. You had me outnumbered, Captain. I'd say you were the officer in charge. Oh. How many reinforcements did you say you were expecting? More. All right. Oh, that's better. Washington would never understand how a Confederate officer's signature got on my expense account. Wait a minute. The fare from Tucson is $40. You have $140. I have $140? Oh, for heavens sakes. My pencil must do so. It's a natural mistake. I... <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Colonel. Thank you. Have a cigar, Captain? Compliments of the Union Army, sir. Thank you. Pass them out. No, thanks. Well, this time I'll keep riding, Jeff. I'll be seeing you. I hope not until this is over. In Baltimore. Have a good trip. Thank you, Jeff. Goodbye. See you later. <gasps> hey!